Hey everyone, I'm Kelsey from Wearable Whisperer, and today I'm going to show you how to set up the Fitbit Versa 2. Now these instructions assume that you already have the Fitbit app on your phone and a Fitbit account. If you don't yet have a Fitbit account, you'll want to watch my how to set up the original Fitbit Versa video. I'll link that in the description below. It goes through all the steps starting from scratch of creating a new Fitbit account and setting up your first Fitbit device. But if you already have the Fitbit account and the app on your phone, make sure you have the most recent app. And once you know it's the most recent app, then go ahead and tap on your profile picture in the upper right hand corner. And now you'll see set up a device. Go ahead and tap on that. And here's where you would find Versa 2 in the list. Since we're at launch, it's here at the top. And then whatever it says here, go ahead and tap Setup. If it says switch to Versa 2, then whatever device you currently have connected to your account can't be connected at the same time as Versa 2, unfortunately. So go ahead and tap here. And this is some privacy information that you should read. And if you agree to it, go ahead and tap Accept. Now this is telling you that you should let your device charge throughout the setup process. I do recommend that you do this. I'm not going to because for this video's purpose I need to have the Versa 2 laying flat. But I have charged my device up pretty high, so if you have it charged above 50% it should probably be okay. If you want to be sure, go ahead and put it in its, put it in its charging cradle and make sure that it's currently charging. If you have any issues with how to charge your Versa 2, I do have a video on how to do that. So I'll link that in the description below. So once your Versa 2 is charging, go ahead and tap Next. And now it says it's searching for Versa 2 via Bluetooth. And it quickly found my device. And now a set of four digits has appeared on the Versa 2's display. Don't worry if yours are different, they most likely will be. Then go ahead and type those digits into your phone. All right, so now it says that it's connecting to Fitbit. And we have a green check mark on our Versa 2's display. And according to our phone, the next step is the Versa 2 needs to download and install the latest updates. So I'll go ahead and tap Next. So once you find your Wi-Fi router in the list, go ahead and tap on it. And now you'll in need to enter its password. Alright, once you've entered your password, go ahead and tap Connect. So now your Versa 2 is trying to connect to your Wi-Fi router. And if you're having any issues here, I would suggest getting closer to your Wi-Fi router as that sometimes can help. So again, I could skip ahead in these videos, but I kind of like to show you real time that, yeah, sometimes it does take a little while for these things to connect and it's not just you. All right, there we go. We have a green check mark on our Versa's display and it says our Versa 2 is now connected to our preferred Wi-Fi router. So go ahead and tap next. Now it says set up your Versa 2. This process normally takes several minutes to complete. Make sure to keep Versa 2 charging and near your phone until the update is done. Alright, let's go ahead and start update. Okay, so a few things to note here. At the top of our phone, we have a teal bar and it says setting up Versa 2 and underneath it, it says connecting. So this is kind of the first small step is connecting and here it has moved on to the second step and it's the updating step. So you'll see this percentage progress update. Seems like it starts at 5% and then it should go all the way up to 100% when the updating stage is done. And here on my Versa 2's display, you'll see that a teal progress bar has just started on the left side. So what happens is this updating is going to go from 0 to 100%. 
this progress bar is going to fill from left to right on your screen. And then there's actually going to be a second step that's called installing. And there'll be a second progress bar. So just so you know, that's what's going to happen a little bit later. And in the meantime, you can feel free to use your phone during this update. Just remember to keep it close to Versa 2. I think the sinking distance is 30 feet, but I would recommend closer or something like 10 or even 5 feet would be best. And you can also go through these little line items to learn about your Versa 2. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So Alexa on your wrist. Versa 2 has Alexa built in to let you do more with your watch. You can talk to Alexa on your Fitbit device. Get friendly reminders, set reminders, alarms, or start a timer simply with your voice. Stay up to date, check for weather, and get quick answers to almost any question. Master smart devices. Use your voice to control Alexa-compatible speakers, lights, or thermostat. And this is noting that it's the United States only for now and coming soon to other countries. And this requires connecting smart devices to the Amazon Alexa app. So we can press this little arrow to go back. And activity tracking. Your activity impacts your goals. Versa 2 works with the Fitbit app to track and improve your activity. Steps. See how many steps you take daily and set a goal to challenge yourself. Distance. Your steps are converted into distance so you see how far you've traveled. Active minutes. Earn active minutes when you work out more intensely. Calories. Your device automatically tracks how many calories you've burned. Use the Fitbit app to log calories from food. Always on display. Use this mode to see activity stats and check the time with just a glance. I have a video on how to set up the always on display for your Fitbit Versa 2, so I'll link that in the description below if that's something you're interested in learning how to set up. Pay from your wrist. Fitbit Pay lets you pay on the go so you can leave that wallet at home. Payments are fast and secure. Merchants never see your card number and you still get bank protection. Add your cards, add credit or debit cards into the Fitbit app. Look for the symbol. Fitbit Pay works anywhere that accepts contactless payments. Tap and pay. Hold your watch next to the terminal, get confirmation, and go. And if you're interested in using Fitbit Pay on your Fitbit Versa 2, I've made a video on how to set up and use Fitbit Pay also, so I'll link that in the description below. Heart rate and exercise. Keep a pulse on how fast your heart is beating and see trends. Versa 2 tracks your heart rate 24-7 to help you exercise better. Heart rate zones. See how much time you spend in fat burn, cardio, and peak zones. Real-time pace and distance. Connect the device to your phone's GPS to see pace and distance during runs and bike rides. Goal track for 15 plus exercises. Set a goal for a specific exercise. Your device tracks your progress and real-time stats. Auto exercise recognition. Your device has smart track technology to automatically recognize when you've worked out. And I'll stop here and note that it now says, all right, there we go. It moved on to this third phase of the installation of the setup process. And it now says that it is installing. And at the moment, the progress bar on my Versa 2 display, the first progress bar has not yet finished, but it should finish soon. And when it does, you'll probably see your Versa restart. So it'll go black. The logo will come back on the screen and then a second progress bar will start. And this second progress bar should be a little bit faster than this first progress bar is. So just to let you know, that's what to expect. And I'll go on to the final line item here, sleep tracking and sleep score. Versa 2 gives you data without disturbance. All you have to do is wear it to bed and wake up to new stats. Sleep stages. View your time spent asleep in light, deep, and REM sleep from the Fitbit app. And it has just restarted and the Fitbit logo has just come back on as I told you would happen. <laughs> Sleep score. Get to know your night with a daily sleep quality score. Your score sums up time asleep, sleep stages, and restlessness. And here the second progress bar 
has started to come on the screen. For some reason, it's a dimmer screen this time, so it might be a little bit harder to see than the previous progress bar. And sleep mode and silent alarm. Your device has a sleep mode that allows you to dim the display and silence all calls and texts. Set a silent alarm to awake to a gentle vibration on your wrist. All right, so now it's just a little bit of a waiting game, but it looks like this progress bar has jumped quite a bit, so it shouldn't be too much longer. And from my experience, this setup process hasn't been taking as long as previous Fitbit setups. I don't know if it's just because I actually did get this uh, overnight shipping from Fitbit before the official release date, so there aren't too many people setting up Versa 2s, so your, your mileage may vary, as they say. And especially if you're setting this up on a day like Christmas, there could be a lot of people trying to reach the Fitbit servers and it might take a little bit longer. But here's the all green on the Fitbit display. So that progress bar has completed. And we have the quick tips showing up on our display. And our phone is now a green background with a check mark saying Versa 2 is ready. So I'll come back to those quick tips in a second, but for now, I'll go ahead and tap continue on my phone. So since Versa 2 is the first Fitbit to have built-in voice control with Amazon Alexa, they have a little page here about voice and your privacy. So Versa 2 has a built-in microphone to power voice features. The microphone will only be on when you are using a voice feature. So this means your Fitbit 2, if you enable the built-in voice control, will only be listening to you when you actually bring it up. You have to interact with your device to have it start listening to you. It's not listening to you 24-7. And it says you can always disable the microphone entirely for all voice features and your settings on Versa 2. So if you don't want to have anything to do with this voice control stuff, then you can actually disable this completely and it will never listen to you ever. So once you understand that, you can tap got it. And here it's going through the Amazon Alexa setup process. If you don't want to enable this, you can just tap not now. I'm going to go ahead and go through this for people who do want it, including myself. So Versa 2 includes Alexa. Versa 2 is all you need to talk to Alexa. Swipe over to see how Alexa can help. Get friendly reminders. Set reminders, alarms, or start a timer simply with your voice. Alexa will let you know when the time is up. I find this really useful when I am cooking. And master smart devices. Use your voice to control Alexa compatible speakers, lights, or thermostat. And this requires connecting smart devices to the Amazon Alexa app. Stay up to date. Check for weather and get quick answers to almost any questions. I actually find this a lot more useful than using the weather app on my Fitbit Versa. You can just ask Alexa to tell you if it's going to rain today or what the high temperature is, things like that. So I'm looking forward to using this on my personal Versa too. So if you're wanting to set up Amazon Alexa now, go ahead and tap log in with Amazon. Otherwise you can always set it up later with not now. So here we have a little Amazon Alexa screen. It says your device includes Alexa. Use your voice to play music, podcasts, radio, and more. Tap get started. All right, so here I think it's actually supposed to tell you some privacy information. Since this is not my first time setting up a Versa 2, it's actually not telling me these things. But for you, it might have some text on here and tells you that, you know, Amazon does store some voice recordings in the cloud because it helps them recognize your voice and learn to understand your commands. So if you're okay with whatever this text says on your page, then go ahead and tap allow. And you might also have to sign into Fitbit. I don't know, your, your screen might be a little bit different, but the settings should be fairly self-explanatory. So I'm gonna tap allow. And 
And one other thing it didn't show that it has shown in the past is asking to enable location permission. So if you want to be able to get your weather, I would highly recommend tapping use location on that screen if it comes up on yours. Um, if you don't want it to use location, you can always add it later and say not now or don't set up, whatever that option is. But just to know, if you want weather or to ask things like where's the nearest yoga studio, I think was the example they used, then you do need to have the location services enabled. And my Alexa is set to English. Yours might have something up here that lets you choose your language. And you can always change your language in the Alexa settings of the Fitbit app. And it says here, says that I'm connected to Alexa. And here are some things that I can say. Set a timer for 20 minutes. Set an alarm for 6 a.m. Is it going to rain today? How much protein is in an egg? Remind me to go for a jog at 1 p.m. So I'll have a video about how to use Alexa and some of the common commands and how you can cancel things that you've set with Alexa, all of that. So I'll link that in the description below also. But for now, go ahead and tap continue. And it's telling us how to wake Alexa. If you set the button to Alexa, press and hold the button until Alexa appears on the screen. If your button is set to Fitbit Pay, you can reach Alexa from the control center. Swipe down to reach the control center, tap Alexa, and just ask. So I actually also have a video that shows you a complete hands-on walkthrough of how to navigate your Versa 2's display and screen. And I'll go into some of that detail later in this video, but if you want to see that video, I'll link that one in the description below. It's called How to Navigate Fitbit Versa 2. So for now, let's tap Continue. Try it on. It's the moment your wrist has been waiting for. Wear your device snugly, but with enough room for comfort. Let it sit a finger width above your wrist bone. During workouts, secure the band so that it lays flat. Two to three finger widths above your wrist bone. So I'm not going to try mine on now because I want to keep it in the display view here for you. But if you want to, go ahead and try yours on. When you're ready, tap next. So it's changing out the band. Swap out your band for more sizes and styles. And it shows you a little infographic or GIF here about how to swap the band. I actually also made a video for this. It's called How to Change Your Fitbit Versa 2 Band. I'll link that in the description below also. I just want to let you know that you can get, a, get the hang of it. It does take a little bit of practice and some bands are easier than others. I actually have the special edition original Fitbit Versa band on my Versa 2 here because it allows me to lay this flat. The original classic band that it came with didn't let me lay it flat. And I can switch this band pretty easily without too much, you know, failure attempts. It can take me only five seconds sometimes. Um, but with the original classic band, it's a little bit harder. So just so you know, you're not the only one who's having some issues with changing the bands if you do have some issues with that. So let's go ahead and tap next. And now it's telling us quick tips on Versa 2. Wear your device and follow the tips on the display. So I'll go through this in a second. So for now I'm going to tap next. And it says swiping left reveals your apps. Then press the button once to go back. Swiping up reveals health stats like steps, sleep, and more. And swiping down shows control center and the latest texts and calls. And pressing and holding the button accesses Alexa or Fitbit Pay, depending on which shortcut you set it to. And we'll go over all these quick tips here in a second. But on the phone, it's telling us wear and care tips. Clean your band and wrist regularly with a soap-free cleanser. I personally use Cetaphil. I wash it every time I come back from a workout. If the device gets wet, remove it and dry completely after your activity. And take your device off from time to time. If you do notice skin irritation, please remove your device. See our full wear and care tips. Next. And now it says we're all set. Now get moving and make every moment count. 
you can either learn about Versa 2 or press done. So I'm going to go ahead and press done. So on our Versa 2's display, if we go over these quick tips, we'll do that. So follow these tips to learn how to use your Fitbit. I'll go ahead and press start. It says shortcut. Press and hold the button to access preset shortcut. Change shortcut for left button in settings. So for now, I'm going to move this phone out, actually. And I'm going to zoom in. So if I double tap, double tap to wake up my screen, I will press and hold this left button. So here's where you can select your shortcut. So you can have this be set to either Alexa or Fitbit Pay, whichever one you think you're going to use more or you want to have at a quicker access point, then I would recommend that. I'm going to probably use Alexa more than Fitbit Pay, so I'm going to re remain Alexa as my shortcut. If you want to change your Fitbit Pay, all you do is tap on that text. So once you made your selection, go ahead and tap save. And it says shortcut saved. Swipe down on display to see all other features. You can change your shortcut in settings. All right, let's go ahead and say, got it. Nice, use this power move to access your shortcut anytime. Notifications and control center. Swipe down to see control center and notifications. Okay, so I'm swiping down from the top. And this is where it will show your text messages and call notifications. It also shows your remaining battery percentage, as well as the current month and day of month. And if you pull down here, this is what they call the control center. By default, it only stays on there for two seconds. You can swipe and hold on your screen. So I'm pulling down, wow, uh, pulling down. There we go. And my finger's still on the screen, so I can kind of force it to stay open longer because two seconds isn't really that long. So this is where you have the music controls. If you're going to download music to your phone or control music playing from your phone. This middle icon is a green wallet icon. It's there because that's for Fitbit Pay. And I chose Alexa to be my shortcut for the left button. If you chose Fitbit Pay to be your shortcut for the left button, then you would see a blue circle Alexa logo here in the middle of your control center icons. And then this last icon here is your quick settings. So let's go ahead and look at that. So it says quick settings, adjust your screen and notification settings from here. Got it. Now these aren't all that self-explanatory, so let's just tap on each one and see what happens. So tapping on that one says it's do not disturb. Calls and notifications are silenced. So it says do not disturb is on when it has a green background. If you tap it again, then do not disturb is off. So tap to be on, and when it's grayed, it's off. Now this one says sleep mode. All calls and notifications are silenced, and the display will only wake with a button press. So I think the difference between do not disturb mode and sleep mode is that with do not disturb mode, your display will still come on with the flick of a wrist, if you have that set up. But in sleep mode, it will disable that flick of the wrist display coming on. So when you're sleeping and you toss or turn or something, your screen won't come on. But if you want to have your screen come on, you can always press the button or I think maybe force double or triple tap the display, something like that. So as I said, display will only wake with a button press. So let's say got it and when sleep mode is on I think it affects these two settings but we'll go over those in a second so I'm going to turn sleep mode off and then this bottom left if we tap that it says it's the always on display 
So the display will stay on to show time, stats, and battery life. So again, if it's green, always on mode is on. If it's gray, always on is off. So if I have it on, I'll show you what happens. By default, your Versa is set to have a screen timeout of 10 seconds, which means it'll show whatever you're looking at for 10 seconds, and then after 10 cents, seconds of inactivity, either display will be completely off, or if you have the always on display on, it will show the always on display. This is the always on display. It's not your current clock face. And if you want to learn how to customize that, I made a video about how to customize and set up your always on display. I'll link that in the description below because I don't want this video to be too super long. So to wake this up, you can either triple tap or press the button. So I'm going to press the button. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the always on display. And this middle section that's the brightness. So right now it's set for max. This is the dim option or normal. And I think when it's on sleep mode, this has to be in dim. So if I put sleep mode on, you'll see if I try to tap on the brightness, it says brightness must be dim for sleep mode. So if I turn off sleep mode, then it goes back to the maximum brightness. And finally, this last little button here, if we tap on that, it says screen wake. Screen will only wake with a button press or a light tap. So screen wake is set to manual button, or here with these different arrow arrows, it will wake with the flick of your wrist. So this is, I think this used to be the quick view setting on or off, like in the original Versa and Ionic, things like that. So it's probably the hardest one for me to remember and explain, but that's what it is. It's basically quick view on or off. So I think I want it to be on for now. So I'll leave these settings as is, and the only way to get out of this is to press the button once. Then it takes you to this, and you can either press the button again, or you can swipe up. And it says, great, use this move from anywhere to bring up control center and notifications. Now your stats. Swipe up from the clock to see today's stats. Okay, so we're going to swipe up from the clock face. And it says, today, select up to seven stats to easily track with Fitbit today. So this today's screen, kind of like the other screen swiping down, shows your battery percentage and the date. And I'll go through these. This is the activity section. Right now it's showing total steps for the day. This is your total distance, your floors, total calories burn. Now it says 717 already, even though I haven't exercised today because this includes your total calories burned even at rest. So this number will always be quite a bit higher than your actual exercise calories burned. It's one thing that I don't really like about Fitbits is that I can't separate my exercise calories from the calories that I burn just by being alive. And this little lightning bolt is for active minutes. And this section is our hourly activity, saying how many steps you have this hour. So if you haven't reached your 250 steps this hour, that will be there. Otherwise, you can swipe or it will show how many hours you have achieved your hourly activity goal. This is the heart rate section. It shows your current heart rate if you're wearing it and your resting, current resting heart rate. Let me see if I can bring this up a little bit. Get some of the grays on there. <laughs> and then this will show your minutes in fat burn, cardio, and peak exercise zones and your cardio fitness score and how it compares to people of your same age and gender. This is the sleep section. It shows how many hours of sleep you got the previous night. Also shows how many minutes and hours you got in each of the four sleep stages, if you had sleep stages sleep. And it also shows your recent seven day average sleep duration. And the little stars designate whether you met your sleep duration goal or not. And here we have our three of six days of weekly exercise, showing us how many days we've got toward our exercise goal. 
and it also shows you some basic stats about your most recent workouts. And here at the bottom there's a settings section and it says you can select up to seven stats to easily track with Fitbit today. So we have activity, hourly steps, heart rate, exercise, sleep. So I already showed you all of those. There's also water, food, weight, and badges. So let's say I want to add water. All I do is tap on that and I see the green check. And let's say I want to use food also, so I'll tap on that. And you'll see that weight, along with badges, has just been grayed out. That's because you can only choose seven of these and there are currently nine. So if you wanted to choose badges instead, you would have to tap <laughs> this did this last time also. I don't know if it's a bug or what exactly. I'm going to go back and then tap on settings. So select water again, select food again, and then in order to choose weight, I would have to deselect one and then that would be an option again. So that's how you customize which seven stats you want to display in the Fitbit Today portion. And when you're done with that, you just have to press the button once to go back. And now if I scroll, I'll see that water and food has now appeared. So food tells you how many calories you've eaten, how many calories you have left, as well as the percentage macros for protein, fat, and carbs. And water is pretty cool. You can actually log water on your device. All you do is tap, and then you can enter a number, and then you tap check. And these units are based on the units that are set up with your profile. So if you need to change those, you can change those in your profile. You can also swipe over to see a history of your average water logged. You can see each day and then the average for the past seven days. And you'll see now that it says I have eight fluid ounces of water logged for the day. One final tip here with the today section is you can actually rearrange these. So if you tap hold and drag, you can move them around. So I'm going to tap, hold, and drag up. So now, for example, I have water showing up at the top above activity. So this could be useful if you want to easily log water. You don't have to scroll all the way to the bottom or something like that. Uh, you can rearrange whatever you want to see from top to bottom, most important to least important. So those are the basics of how you use your Fitbit Versa 2. We've set it up and there are some other customizations you might want to make, including how to change your clock face and how to customize your exercise shortcuts. Those are usually two of the most important things people want to do right after they set up their Versa 2. So if you're interested in doing those two things, please check out my videos in the description below. I'll also link them at the end of this, this video. And if you like this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up down below. It really helps my video and this channel. And consider subscribing to this channel. It's free and I've got a lot more wearable content coming out over the next few months. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.